Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Uh, we have a special day today. As you well know, this is uh, going to be, I think, a quarterly thing. We have a pasture, uh, pasture exchange. So Pastor Robin is at Sugar Creek, I think. Congregation, and today we have Pastor Bob Klingler from the Methodist Church with us today to share a message. So, my name is uh, Greg Lushnenko. For those of you who may not know who I am, Pastor Rob and asked me and my wife Denise, who was a Brown and now is a uh, knows is known by Greg and Denise L, who can't pronounce their names. It's Lushnenko. Um, they asked us to help out, so my wife will be doing the Kyrie, and I'll be doing most of the other liturgical stuff. Uh, we do have some announcements. Um, as you can see in your bulletin, we have from the ELCA the uh, disaster response for Hurricane Matthew. So if you're willing to help out in any way, please do so. Uh, we also have this afternoon from 12 to 1.30 the KTFL Youth Chili Fundraiser. Well, they'll be doing chili and hot dogs, I believe, with a drink. Uh, you can either dine in or carry out. Free will offering has taken place. This will be at the Congregational uh, Ch Christian Church today. So if you're willing to help out, that's wonderful. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Yes, Rose. We are in need, desperate need of readers. So my husband's going to bring up this nice little clipboard that we all love. And we're passing around the group. Please take time to sign up. I have nobody for next Sunday and none for the rest of the year. So. Okay, so the clipboard's coming around. Any other announcements? I would like for my friend who Okay. Any other prayer requests that need to be brought forward? Any others? Okay, if that is all, then let us. Of course. Obviously. I'm sorry, a little confused, but that's okay. Um, thank you all for having me here today. It's so wonderful to be here with you. And uh, just to let you know again, you guys are very blessed to have Robin as your pastor. Um, but next Sunday at 5 p.m., um, our church is going to be having a prayer walk. Um, we have been doing these monthly, and we'd like to continue them throughout the, the winter months as well. Um, but what we will do is gather together at the Methodist Church at 5. We will say a prayer together, and then we walk through the entire town and pray for every house um, as we go by. We don't knock on doors and ask people to pray for them. Um, if people are out, we do offer prayer or conversation, whatever may come. Um, but we would love for you to join us. I know that Pastor Chuck's going to bring a group, and we'll have a group. Um, but our goal is just to saturate Lafayette in prayer. Um, saturating the Holy Spirit and see what God does in his movement through our city, our community. So if you'd like to, 5 o'clock on Sunday. All right, if we have nothing else, then let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prelude.
Please stand if you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the only sovereign who dwells in light, Christ Jesus who came to save sinners, the Holy Spirit who lives within us. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of overflowing grace, we come to you with repentant hearts. Forgive us for shallow thankfulness. Forgive us for passing by the ones in need. Forgive us for setting our hopes on fleeting treasures. Forgive us our neglect and thoughtlessness. Bring us home from the wilderness of sin and strengthen us to serve you in all that we do and say. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, there is joy in heaven over every sinner who repents. By the grace of God in Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us all, our sins are forgiven, and we are made free. Rejoice with the angels and with one another. We are home in God's mercy now and forever. Amen. Please rise for the opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Holy God, our righteous judge, daily your mercies surprise us with everlasting forgiveness. Strengthen our hope in you and grant that all the peoples of the earth may find their glory in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. Although our iniquities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our apostasies indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler turning aside for the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus says the Lord concerning this people, truly they have loved to wander. They have not restrained their feet, therefore the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. Have you completely rejected Judah? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so there is no healing for us? We look for peace, but find no good. For a time of healing, but there is terror instead. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, the iniquity of our ancestors, for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember and do not break your covenant with us. Can any idols of the nations bring rain? Or can the heavens give showers? It is not you, O Lord, our God. We set our hope on you, for it is you who do all this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 84, 1 through 7, responsibly. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh shall rejoice in the courts of the Lord. Therefore, I will sing of the Lord. I will sing of the Lord. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest, where she may lay her young by the side of your altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will be seen in Zion. A reading from Second Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack 
and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were uh, that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, "God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector." I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all of my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalted themselves will be humble, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of our Lord. I believe we have a a kid's moment. Is this where you guys sit? I'll sit with you, huh? Got some pretty good looking kids here. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. You guys all in school yet? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I brought a friend of mine um, from where I went to school, and we won't mention that because it's not Alan East. But, <laughs> and this friend has been traveling with me most of my life, and uh, his name is Puffy. <laughs> See that there? Let's, let's let have Puffy come out. <coughs> what do you think of that? That's Puffy. See, Puffy was my friend, and uh, we did a lot of things in school together. We, we, um, we played sports. We would study. We would go into our study groups. Um, we would uh, hang out at McDonald's maybe after school. Now, uh, the only thing about Puffy is sometimes Puffy thought he was a little bit better than me and everybody else, but he was still my friend. So after school, we'd sit down, and we'd talk, and Puffy would say, you should have seen me today. In gym class, I scored almost all the points. I'm so much better than everybody else. And suddenly, Puffy, his head started to get a little bigger. And I said, well, that's good, Puffy. It, it, you know, teamwork's important, and I'm glad that you did your part on the team. He said, oh, I forgot to tell you. We had a test today, 100%. Everybody else got 80 or below her. I'm the smartest kid in my class. Suddenly, what do you think happened? It got bigger. So we said, oh, I'm on the drama club this, this weekend. I've got the main act. Go figure, right? I'm the best actor there is in our school. His head's getting big. And he said, I'm going to go to my job today, and I'm getting a promotion. You want to know why? Because I'm the hardest worker there is at McDonald's. (laughs) What's the matter with him? (laughs) And he said, you know what? I'm going to go home, and I don't have to do any chores this evening. My other eight brothers and sisters have to. And it's because I'm the best kid out of the bunch. Where are you going? (laughs) 
And he said, I'm going to climb the tree with my brothers and sisters after they're done with their chores, and I'll make it to the top, and I'm going to beat them there because I'm the fastest, the strongest, and the biggest out of my brothers and sisters. <laughs> I can't blow it up. <laughs> what do you think? Let it go. Why would I do that? This is my best friend. <laughs> and he said, finally, I'm going to go to bed. And you know what? I'm going to go to sleep before everybody else because I listen to my parents better than anybody else. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, man. You know what the nice thing about Puffy is? I find more of them at Walmart. <laughs> oh. You see, Puffy was a pretty good guy, and he was good at a lot of things, as you can tell. And, and most typically, <laughs> I won't do another one. <laughs> most typically, he was even the best at what he did. But the issue was is that he looked down on everybody else because they weren't as good as him. See, he thought by being the best at everything that everybody else made them the worst at it. And he should be exalted and he should be looked at. And in the end, if we act like that, Jesus tells us in the parable with the Pharisee and the tax collector that it brings our destruction. And God will hear us if we humble ourselves, if we tell God that he is holy and we are not. So this week as we go around to our schools and our families and we think about how we're good at something, it's good to be good at things but it's not good when we gloat over and we tell other people they're not as good. All right? Got it? So don't be like Puffy, because he made a mess. <laughs> Let's get you some candy, huh? This is the best part, isn't it? There you go. You don't like that. How about this one? <laughs> You're very welcome. Thanks for coming up, guys. <laughs> kids are awesome, aren't they? See, the thing about kids is that we learn the same life lessons they do, and we experience the same lessons they do, but they have a whole lot more fun when they do it. If you brought your Bibles today, if you would, turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 12. And I read verses 41 through 44. I'm excited about the pulpit exchange. I'm excited I meet with your pastor and the other pastors in the community every month for lunch. And we, we usually, it's supposed to be about an hour meeting and ended up being two to three hours every time. We just have a blast. And um, we, of course, talk about what we'd like to see in our communities and what we'd like to see in each other's lives and we'd like to, what we'd like to see in our personal churches. And we thought this would just be a neat way for us to connect together. And uh, so, as much um, the people that stood in this back room with me beforehand saw how much we just change here, change here, you do this, you do that, it's been happening for over a month because you guys do things completely different than I do at my church. And nothing wrong with that, we just do it different and it's fun to learn things. But the one thing was about three days ago, after, even though Robin gave me all the papers I needed to know what happened here over a month ago, three days ago I gave her a call and I said, I got to run through some things because I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. And it came to find out that we had all these readings that happened, the first, second reading, the gospel reading, all that. Uh, and she said, those are the readings. The readings that I gave you are the ones you will be reading that Sunday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I've already prepared a sermon, as I probably should have three days before the service. I said, what do I do? She said, you just preach on what you're going to preach on. I said, OK, well, I'll read what you got down. And wouldn't you know what I told her on the phone before I read him was that God always has a plan and he always has a way. And the co they coincided so well that I knew that God had a message for us today. So if you would, in Mark chapter 12, 41 through 44. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts 
But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, and she out of her poverty put in everything, all she had to live on. So my wife and I, um, we had the blessing of going on a cruise uh, last week to the Bahamas. And uh, we went without our kids, which made it an even bigger blessing because we enjoyed it rather than chasing kids around. Not that we don't enjoy it with our kids. We went on one with them uh, last year. So as we're going, we come upon this beautiful, beautiful island called Half Moon Key. And the sands are white. An incredible time of year, uh, the incredible part of this time of year is that there's also pink flecks in this sand, which I don't know where it comes from or why, but it's neat. As you'd pick up the sand, which was like powder, you'd watch and pink and white would just flow from your hand. The, the water was blue. We would go up to our waist and you could see your toes moving at the bottom. It was just an amazing place to be. Beautiful, gorgeous. So my wife, um, against my better judgment, she wanted to go into the island and have one of the locals braid her hair. And uh, what they do is just these tiny, real tight little braids, and it took like half an hour of this gorgeous day to stand there and watch her go, oh, oh, oh. And this, this wonderful bohemian lady uh, was doing this, and she was very quiet through the whole thing. That was until we, we started asking her questions. Why do you do this? Where are you from? Do you have any kids? What's your story? So we talked to this lady, and our first question was, did you, do you, are you from this island, and did you suffer any ill effects from all these storms that came through? And she said no. She was one of the lucky ones that was on a different island um, that they barely got anything, just some wind and nothing got knocked over or anything like that. And we said, oh, you know, what a blessing. And so we asked, you know, are your family okay? Were they on different islands? What's the story there? And she kind of shared that um, there were some really tragic places that homes were just leveled. Islands were just destroyed. And uh, my wife's question that after that was, has America come to your aid? And the lady kind of looked at us, and I'm sure she's thinking, you're American. I got to say what I need to say. But she said, you know, yeah, a little bit. And she said, but what you learn out here in the middle of nowhere is that if you don't have each other, you don't have anybody. And she said, when this storm happens, the islands like my own who don't, didn't get hit, we gather together, we get our supplies from our own homes, and we go and we reach into the communities and we help them rebuild. We give them the clothes that we have. We give them the food out of our cabinets. She said, we make it so they are able to survive. This ties in because in comparison, although I'm not rich, from her to myself, she was the poor woman who gave her last two coins. You see, she drives an hour and a half, excuse me, she boats an hour and a half one way every day and boats back to her island an hour and a half just to get to work. She said when this tragedy happened, she has... I think she said she had two kids. It was either two or three, and she had no husband. She said as soon as she heard the tragedy hit, she went through all of her kids' clothes, and she pulled out everything except for maybe one or two outfits. She went through her clothes and pulled out everything except for one or two outfits. She went through her cupboards and pulled out everything except for what she would need for the next few days, and she made sure that it got to the islands that needed help. As you can assume, she doesn't make a whole lot of money. And she, bo she boats all that way, and she has the two kids, and she's on her own, yet she found it in herself to give up almost everything she had. And I looked back and I thought, I was worried about the people of these islands, but the sinful part of me was worried about how my cruise was going to be affected. I'm worried about whether I'm going to lose money on a luxury, and she's worried about who's going to get fed, where are their clothes going to come from, where are they going to live. And so it ties in with the tax collector and the Pharisee, because the Pharisee was a good guy, 
he was of high standing. I feel like I'm a pretty good guy and I'm in a place of position. But yet, we thought, has America come to your aid? What have we done to make your life better? What have we done to take care of your needs because we know that you can't do it? You know, that's not where our mindset was, but I bet you that's what she was thinking as we offered our assistance from America. 1 Timothy 6, 6 6-9 says, Godliness and contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. My wife asked her, how often do you have to make that trip to the island to work? And she said, well, typically I work about 14 to 15 days in a row. And my wife said, wow, that must stink, you know, coming from America. She said, well, when the season's slow, because it depends on the cruise ships, when the season's slow and it's winter months or whatever, I only get to come to work seven or eight days a week in a row. And my wife thought, boy, you must get tired of that. And she asked her, and the lady said, you know what? I'm happy to get the work that I get. When there's only seven or eight days, I'm just happy for what I get, and I can't wait for the next cruise ship to come so that I can get back to those 14 and 15 days in a row. Once again, we should have just stuck our hand out and let her smack it, right? (laughs) See, my wife's a nurse, so she only has to work three or four days a week, and that means she gets three to four days off every week. And when she has to work the fifth day, not going to lie, there's a little bit of complaining in the house. (laughs) When I get a call in the middle of the night, sometimes, oh, I'm so tired, you know? And this lady's thanking God that she's on her 15th day of work in a row, where she boated an hour and a half there, worked all day in the hot sun, braiding people's hair. And while these other people are walking around, I'm watching this, listening to this lady tell her story, and I'm watching all the Americans come up and say, oh, you did a beautiful job weaving this basket. But it says 40, will you take 30 for it? Oh, you did great on this little, this little handbag. And it says 35, will you take 25? No, I'm not on a $2,000 cruise right now. No, I didn't take off all of work to be here. And no, I don't recognize that you're here in the middle of a storm trying to raise money for your family at home. You see where I'm going? I don't know if this young lady was a Christian or not, but she portrayed more of Christ to me, a pastor, than I did to her that day, I guarantee it. She showed me what it was like to be content. She showed me what it was like to be selfless. She showed me what it was like to think of her brothers and sisters above her own self. She showed me what it was like to be Jesus in our world today. Luke 12, 33 to 34 says, Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. The interesting part about her explaining this whole story is that not once did she ask me for anything and not once did she ever complain about the situation she was in. Every time it was about how blessed and how lucky she was to be where she was at how lucky she was and how fortunate she was to be able to help others, how fortunate she was that she knew that if the storm had come her way, she would have received the help that she needed. She didn't have a husband, didn't complain about that either, just just was thoughtful and and, uh, thankful for the beautiful children that she had at home. And Philippians 2, 14 to 16 says, to do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation, then you will shine among them like the stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Even after all of this, I'm human and I'm growing. And even on the way here, 
the sun was just, just brilliant today. And I came around the corner, and I couldn't see anything. And I said, for, oh, for heaven's sakes, I can't see anything. And instantly, my mind went to this woman in the middle of disaster and thanking God. And here I am, I'm complaining because the sun's too bright. And I stopped immediately, literally stopped the car. And I said, thank you, God, for the sunshine today. Thank you that I can't see right now because you have sought to bless this planet with the greater of two lights to rule the day and to feed the earth and to give us life. Perspective is just, I don't know, it's everything. The question is for us, when we hear these words and we know they're true, and we see examples of people who we should be reaching out to with the love of Christ, yet they're putting us to shame in the middle of an ocean. The question bears, what are we doing in our community? I live in Bluffton. My question is, if Lafayette had a massive storm, would everyone in this place think, Pastor Bob lives in Bluffton, he'll be over to help us out? I bet he'd give up all of his clothes. I bet he'd give up all of his food. I bet if we needed, he'd even drive us around, maybe even give us his car if we needed to. But yeah, it's a 20-minute drive here and back, but I bet he'd do it 50 times a day just for me. Up until today, probably none of you knew, most of you didn't know my name, so you wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> but yet, why not? Because becoming a pastor in Lafayette, this has become my home. This has become my community. My face should be in the community. The people hurting should know my name because I represent Jesus Christ. I represent Lafayette churches all across the board. 1 Peter 4, 8-11 says, Above all, to love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. One final note. My wife constantly, we come from different backgrounds, and she's a beautiful, wonderful woman. Um, she was raised a little differently than I was. And she tells me quite often, I don't understand your giving heart. I don't understand that you would give almost anything because those of you who don't know me, that's the type of guy I am. But it took me to boat thousands, fly and then boat thousands of miles away to realize that, that I was nowhere near where God wanted me to be. And my cry out to God is that, God, you would give me a heart that breaks for the things that yours breaks for. That you would give me eyes that see things the way that you see them. You would give me ears to hear things the way that you hear them. And that finally you would give me a mouth that speaks the words that you would speak. And that's our prayer for today. Each of you, every day when we wake up and we look at our community, that should be our prayer. That we would be more like him. So that 1 Peter 4.11 would come true. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. I don't know how you do things here, but I'm going to pray real quick, if that's okay. I think I was supposed to pray beforehand, but that's okay. If you would, bow your heads with me. Most gracious and holy Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for your presence here with us today. We thank you that when we step out these doors, your presence goes with us. Lord, help us to be ambassadors of your truth. Help us to carry about that presence that you have so that all may know and see you in our lives. Lord, as the tax collector that stood afar off, we humble ourselves this morning. Lord, that we wouldn't be like Puffy and have our heads blown up and thinking we're better than others and assuming that you'll take care of things and, 
and we don't need, we don't need, that no one needs our help, and we don't need to be doing these things. We're perfectly content where we were at. But Lord, you've asked us to be content with little. You've asked us to be content with obedience. And you've asked us to be content with love. So Lord, as we finish up here, as we walk out these doors, may we walk out with love, with grace, with mercy, compassion, and with giving hearts, Lord. That you would be exalted in Lafayette as the King of kings and Lord of lords. And at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. We thank you. We love you with all of our hearts. We thank you for your love to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise.
Well, let us confirm our faith in the words of the, Apollo, uh, the Apostles' Creed found on page 217. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Set free by the truth of God's gracious love, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's good creation. Only you are righteous, O God. Lead your church to true repentance so that we reflect your light and truth to the world. Hear us, O God. Only you can bring rain, O God. Be with those who lack clean water or must walk miles to quench their thirst. Hear us, O God. Only you can judge the nations, O God. Raise up leaders with humble hearts so that your peace spreads across the earth. Hear us, O God. Only you can bring healing, O God. Be with all those whose hearts ache who hold out empty hands, who long for forgiveness, and for those who weep for those who have lost. Comfort the grieving and the heal, and heal the sick, especially those on our prayer list, and Ruth Pepper, and the family of Jeff Walter, Walting. Hear us, O oh God. Only you know the depths of our hearts, O oh God. Call this congregation to loving action in your name and open our eyes to what you are doing among us. Hear us, O oh God. Those who live in your house are happy, O oh God. Keep us by your grace until we join the saints around you, around your throne. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, faithful God, we place ourselves in our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The priests of Christ be with you always. You. Let us share that peace among one another.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hill were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom, for yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. O God of justice and love, we give you thanks that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. As one body in Christ, let us now pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We lead us not into temptation, but us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. <laughs>